but I got the real man right here. <laughs> We're talking space, aliens, the history of science. What is our place in the universe? These are all very deep questions, Neil. For decades, our next guest has tried to help us understand all the answers. And now we're getting up close and personal in letters from an astrophysicist. Joining me on the set today, the man himself, author Neil deGrasse Tyson. Hello. I'm oh, so happy you're here. Oh, thing going on here. I know. This oh, is can so, you feel it? You I feel can it? feel it. It's, <laughs> it's sucking me in. Okay, so let's talk first and foremost, because mm -hmm. what so many of us appreciate, if you, you've taken these huge, uh, complicated concepts of space and time, and you've tried to break it down for us mere mortals, us average Joes. Um, why is it so important to bring these topics down to street level for us? Well, there are two different dimensions here. One of them is, has someone asked a complicated science question, and then what kind of answer can I give that can bring them closer right. to, to it? And the book, however, is more sort of angst-ridden. It's people who are trying to understand their place in the universe, their, their, what their purpose is in the universe, and they've reached some impasse in their life and felt compelled to write to me. I love I that. I think most people have never even met a scientist in their life much less claim one as their friend. And what I've found <laughs> is that people see me as their friend. Yes. Just if you should read the way these letters come in. I'm having this problem at, at home. I, I, or some people are, are raised in maybe a religious tradition and it right. conflicts with the science. They come to me and I wanna know what guidance I can give them. And when I think about it, I say, when I reply to you, there's an implicit contract, which is you're coming to me from a place. And if I don't understand that place, then there's no way I can, can answer, yeah. I, I, I can answer it. Otherwise, I'm just lecturing to you. And right. that's, not, that's not really uh, communicating. You received, I understand, hundreds of thousands of letters. Um, look, look, uh, thousands, or not thousands, hundreds of hundreds thousands. Of, well, hundreds of thousands <laughs> is what I like to think. No, but what would you say are some of the most moving ones for you um, that really touched your heart? Yeah, there's several. And in fact, I go back into the book, I well up reading oh the exchange, gosh. even though like I edited it and put it in and wrote it in the first place. Uh, there are three letters from uh, men who are incarcerated. One of them is serving seven years for, for uh, aggravated vehicular manslaughter. Like somebody died, for, right. he, he was drunk, somebody died. And he's concerned about his two teenage children because they showed well on test scores for science and technology and math, so the STEM test. And he said, uh, I, you know, I, my crime is, I will, I, uh, I, I, the impact of my crime right. was felt like all over. And he just wanted to make sure, that, is there anything I can help him to help his kids oh my stimulate gosh. this interest? And, and he said, in that way, his children will know that he still loves them. Yeah, oh my was, gosh, or have a better future. <laughs> for, that this breaks is the, my heart. Yes. It broke my heart too. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, so I'm there and I'm, so I wanna be sensitive, but of course there's the victim out there. Right, right. right? So you, you have to walk that line knowing because this man cares about his kids. Wow. And, I, I mean, it, it's, it's really impactful. And he's in San Quentin, by the way. He's so in, it's like in, you know, these famous prisons. Right. 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 But it's so impactful that you are, really are trying to reach them at such a, a human level because yes. these are questions that we've asked since the dawn of time. In fact, let's go there. Uh-oh, you're going there. Is, let's go okay. there. <laughs> Is there other life out there? We don't know, but if you look at how quickly life formed on Earth from nothing. If you look at the ingredients of life and see how common it is in the universe, and you look at how old the universe is, no one studying that problem would say there isn't life. Right. So we're saying, yeah, we're looking for what we are pretty sure is out there when we search for life in the universe. Okay, Neil, the I The real question is... If, if <laughs> when will we meet them? <laughs> What would they look like? No. Uh, the aliens, you know, have they ever visited? People want to know. Have they visited? Right. I, I think they visited and they just kept going because there was no sign of intelligent life on Earth. Well, oh, now, that's not, that's not true. We have, look at Neil, he was like, okay, Neil, we're running out of time. Oh, I did a little mm -hmm. research, okay? We've uh -oh. got some very simple run-of-the-mill. Do I get glasses the mill, like that? I want glasses the mill, like that. I can get you some. All right, are you ready for this? Sure. Run-of-the-mill, easy, easy questions. Right. In your 1993 publication, you posit that within the last century, a large object struck the planet of 
Uranus, even though you told me it's Uranus. Oh, yeah, it's Uranus if you're like in fourth grade. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, but, Uranus. But in the mature world, we got Uranus. Uranus. Yeah. Uranus. Yeah. Okay. You did some homework it there. Completely altered its orbit. Could it have been caused by something like, let's say, the Death Star? Yeah, in principle, but I would just need better data to suggest that a Star Wars force. No, <laughs> no. Are you kidding? That super laser? It could fire at that. Yeah, yeah, and, and destroy all the. Body yeah, it could have knocked it off. Yes. Yeah, it could have done that very easily. Okay. That's correct. Excellent. Oh, I by knew the way, that. In, in Star Wars Force Awakens, they had a new Death Star that sucked energy out of a star and used that to kill planets. They didn't do the calculation right. That could have killed a thousand planets. <laughs> they have a new weapon to kill six planets you instead know, of one. It's you know like what? people do the math. Right, and they, they needed you on the set consulting. Come Don't get on, me guys. No. Okay, next up, yeah. the red dwarf planet. Proxima Centauri is yes. about four light years away. Yeah. Okay, with our current technology, it would take approximately 80,000 years to get there. Can we speed things up a bit, Neil? Is there no one out there with dilithium crystals yeah, to make no this happen? Yeah, or, or warp drives. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna send a message out to Elon Musk and tell him, yes. stop with the rockets, stop with the, with the Hyperloop, stop with the electric car, get to work on a warp drive yes. right now. Yes, okay, okay, let's do it. And I wanna make sure we have this one because this fascinates me. If I leave, oh, thank you, Danielle. She's giving me more time. If I leave Earth and travel at the speed of light uh -huh. to the outer rim of space, picture it, picture it in your mind, people. Picture it, Neil. And then, traveling at the speed of light, I return back to Earth. Is it true? That only a short time period has passed for me. Yes. But something like a hundred years will have passed on Earth. Why? Yeah, it depends on how far away you went. And but if you're going the at the speed rim, of light, yeah. Well, outer rim, the outer rim of the solar system, of the galaxy, or of the universe itself. Yeah, if you Sean, to, what was that? Which one did you mean? Okay, let's go. <laughs> we're blaming other people yes. now. <laughs> Off camera people. Like, come on. <laughs> like you and you, you and you. Sean, and you that and you. was his favorite question. Okay, so if you go to the edge of the galaxy and come back, then two hundred thousand years would have elapsed here on Earth and you would have hardly lived at all because time slows wow. down for you. So it's not very fun because you come back and everyone would have forgotten about you. Right. Yeah, it's just not all your friends are dead. Of course. You know, so what's Long up with that? Long time been dead. Long yes. dead. Okay, right. now, can I go back in time and see myself and what would happen if I saw myself? So, so Stephen Hawking, the late Stephen Hawking, yes. postulated that maybe backwards time travel is impossible because of the paradoxes that it causes. If you go back in time and prevent your parents from meeting each other, then you would not have been born to have gone back in time to prevent your parents from meeting each other. Yeah. Sleep on that one. We saw it in one of our favorite movies. That's yeah. right. All right, <laughs> That's lastly. movies love time yes. travel. Yeah. Who will win the World Series, the Washington Nationals or the Houston Astros? Ooh. Come I, okay. on, Okay, the Houston beat the Yankees. So if you're gonna beat the Yankees, I want you to go all the way. Yeah. Because I'm born in the Bronx, and the Bronx. But do you want the Astros for obvious reason? Astro, I see what you did there. Yes, uh, come on, Neil. Yeah, Houston is Space City. That's where NASA, the, the you know, the, uh, the, the Johnson Space Center. Okay, that's a really good reason, yes. except the Washington Nationals are from Washington, D.C. That's where they allocate the money for NASA. <laughs> no, so, that I, is true. That is true. So, so I, I, I want them to end in a tie. Okay, end in a tie. <laughs> Neil, we could talk to you forever. That oh, was well, so fun. Well, thank thank you. you. And, of course, you can actually check out Neil's newest book, Letters mm -hmm. from an Astrophysicist. Um, well, and I'm in Atlanta because I'm giving a talk tonight. Yes, that's what we're going to mention. At, at, at the Cobb Ener Energy Center just okay. tonight. Yeah. Cobb Energy Center tonight mm -hmm. or head to haydenplanetarium.org to learn more about his fascinating yeah. work. You're awesome. Thank you for being such the a good sport. The universe is awesome. I'm just facilitating that reality for others. I know. I wanted to ask you why you didn't become a scientist, I mean, an astronaut. An astronaut? Yeah, because they're not really going far. Just going in orbit around the Earth or to the moon and it back. It wasn't far enough for you. Not far enough. Wow. That's the He's answer. incredible. Yeah. You know what, Neil? I wish Neil should stick around for this. Another existential question that Ooh. has just stumped us throughout the history of time is how do we make love last, Neil? Oh. <laughs> you have no answers. It's Ooh. that tough, right? But you know who has the answer? <laughs> Love Dr. Chesley McNeil. <laughs> He's back with more after this short break. Come on, Neil. <laughs>